I am the truth. And I am the life. You notice how truth is placed in the middle of those? I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. Truth is the anchor. Huh? Truth is the anchor for the way. Truth is the anchor for the life. So the truth stood before Pilate. Before Pilate spoke to him. But the preponderance of lies were prevailing in the mind and heart of Pontius Pilate. Pilate still had no excuse. He took the moment to listen to the truth. Because Pilate still had the authority to override what the Jews wanted him to do. He still could have did differently. But instead he chose, well, I'm going to just wash my hands of this. How many know you cannot wash your hands from the guilty stain of blood? Huh? There's not enough lye soap. There's not enough lava, dial, safe way, safe boy, or whatever they call this soap, to wash your hands. You cannot wash your hands because when you're trying to wash your hands, what it is, you're trying to wash your heart. Huh? Because what you did is not on your hands. What you did is in your heart. Huh? The Jews, they, 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 had a, they, they didn't have a strong case in terms of what Jesus had done. They tried to paint Jesus as a troublemaker, a man similar to Barabbas. They pointed out that Jesus had been all over Roman territory and was trying to instigate a rebellion. They looked at the lie and tried to promote it by associating it with the truth. The truth was Jesus had been all over Roman territory. Hmm? That was the truth. But the lie was he was not trying to overthrow the Roman Empire because they were carnal. He was overthrowing spiritual empires. The only thing about truth and lies they have in common is one thing. They're both used in the spirit realm. From the spirit realm, the Father said, let us make man in our own image. And God spoke and taught truth to Adam. But then out of the spirit realm, the one who is removed from heaven came to disrupt by any means necessary or by placing a well-placed lie. And from that moment forth, ministers of the lie have went forth speaking the lie unto the people. We face the same thing. We hear from so many different voices, so many different voices, so many different things, and, and people have you so all confused and yes. stuff. I, I, was, I was talking to someone who was a Jehovah Witness the other day, and they were just so adamant about, about what, it wasn't really, they, they, they were not a Jehovah Witness according to them. Oh, I'm not a Jehovah Witness, I've just been studying with them. But was defending them tooth and nail. Mm. And it hurt me to my heart because they don't understand the lie that has been told. Right. They don't understand how things have been changed and switched around in order to fit the lie. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what the word of God says. Do not add a single thing to my word. Do not take away a thing from my word. They don't understand that because each and every week their presiding body calls their watchtower a new word from God. Wow. They consider it just as holy as scripture. Huh? They don't understand it. It just rings in my heart that they don't understand the truth. And most of the time it's due to arrogance that they don't understand the truth. And they better operate in the lie. We've been doing it for so long, why not keep doing it? No, you can stop short of going to hell anytime you want to. My God. We face the same thing though. Not just in the secular world, but also in the religious world. Church is formed due to simple disagreements about truth. Opinions become denominations. And the body of Christ becomes more fragmented. Huh? Too many people make crucial decisions based on half-truths. And any half-truth is a lie. Decisions made based on current situations, not considering the long-term implications of Daryl's decisions. Truth opens up your understanding and allows you to say what God says about you. Truth is that whatever God has begun in you, that he's faithful enough to continue in that. Truth is, is that by his stripes I already healed. Truth is, see, we need to understand what the truth is and start living the truth. 
Truth is that God is a good God. He's faithful to his word. Truth is that God loves you and he loves you enough to give his very best. He loved, he loved you so much. Truth is his love spared not even his own son. His love gives grace to those who do not deserve grace. His love places you into a position to prosper even though you may not deserve to prosper. His love, his grace, the truth is his love, his grace places you in a position to declare and decree. You know, we, we, we get so caught up in our emotions and stuff, we, we mess up and we get caught up in our emotions. The truth is not a feeling. Huh? Feelings are dependent upon human emotions, which are usually unstable. Truth is not an ideal. Ideals are based in human reasoning and human assumptions, and those are often wrong. Truth is a whole lot more than what you think it is, huh? It's a whole lot more than what you think it is. Well, it's true because my mama said what well, maybe mama heard a lot. It's true because that's what my dad said. Maybe daddy heard a lot. You need to be able to have the word with all and in yourself to be able to study and learn the truth. The word of God in Timothy says that study to show yourself approved. A workman need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. What is truth? 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 Now, this truth is about somebody else's congregation because they ain't gonna have it. don't happen in ICC. The truth is, in the other congregations, they say they support their pastor, but I, I, I mean, they can hardly get them to come to Bible study on Wednesday evening. The truth is, they say they support their pastor and support the vision, but I, I mean, they can barely get them to pay tight offering, let alone tight. And if half the people don't even pay their offering, not just the tight. Huh? The truth is you say you support your pastor's vision, but what you really end up supporting is the vision. Turn down the vision. Speaking out against the vision. Huh? The truth is you want authority, but not the responsibility. The truth is you're just like ants at a picnic, bringing nothing but your appetite, but carrying off everything. What is true? Truth is the dispel of lies. Truth is light. Even in the darkest situation, just a little beam of light can make the darkness flee. Why do you think it is that when you stand on truth, even when everyone else is lying, when the liars have more Facebook friends, the liars have more Twitter buddies, the liar is more talented, the, the liar can even be more attractive, but the truth will still prevail. The truth can be ugly, the truth cannot have many friends, the truth cannot have many talents, but the truth is what it is, it is the truth. Amen. Truth may be slow, but truth is everlasting. Lies go up like a house made of twigs, but the slightest wind will blow it down. Huh? The slightest wind will blow it down. Jesus spoke on that. He said that build your house on solid rock. In other words, build your house on the truth. Don't build your house on a lie. See, because when you build your house on the lie, just like you hold a witness is what you do, you end up having to create another lie to cover something else. You have to end up creating another lie. They, they'll create another lie because they've all they always have said that Jesus was Michael the Mark Archangel. So when you go into Daniel, it speaks of many archangels. They don't know about that. They don't teach him there were other archangels besides G, besides Michael. They won't teach that there was Gabriel. They won't teach huh, yeah. that there were there was Raphael. They won't teach about these other angels. They won't teach about these other archangels, huh? And then then when they when they, when the Bible says, "Let us make man in our own image," they've changed even that around where it only says, "God said, I'm making man in my own image." Because of the inconvenience of the truth, they are pro promoting the lie. I know some of you got some relatives that are Jehovah's Witnesses. So you've probably been the kingdom all yourself. But I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to speak the truth. Jesus did not die on a stick. Huh? 
History does not support that the Romans were not crucifying people on sticks. Huh? But just to make themselves feel as if they're right, they say it was a stick. And you know what's amazing about the lie? It's that the lie tries to evolve over a time period. When the lie is caught in a lie, the lie begins to tell another lie to get out of the lie that they told it first. That's the one thing about a lie. A lie will continue to work for it and try to make itself look good. Huh? I don't want to talk no more about that. I'm going to teach you guys about that in the series that I want you to come to Bible study for called Defending Your Faith. Amen. Amen. The truth stands on solid foundation. Truth builds trust. Truth gives peace. Truth frees you. Believing the truth will allow you to enter into the gates of heaven. And you won't have to stand before an angry God. <coughs> you think mama brought some scunny when she was mad. <coughs> you don't want to stand before an angry God who will love you even while you're in hell. Huh? You don't want to stand before an angry God. See, mama can only beat so much skin off you. Huh? But this angry God can have the skin burnt off of you and then restore that skin so it can be burnt again. Huh? Heal you so that you can be hurt again. By God. Hallelujah. Believing the truth will send you to heaven for the lie. We'll damn stand on your feet, John. Hallelujah. What is the truth? What is the truth? What is the truth? What is the truth? The truth is Emmanuel, God in the flesh, walked among us. All men, yet all God. He came challenging tradition which was not of God. He came healing the sick, delivering minds, mending, casting out demons. He was popular for a time period. I, I, I can feel you, Jesus. For a time period, you have your period of popularity. You something new. He was popular until he revealed the hearts of the temple leaders. Then he was lied on. He was set up. He was betrayed. He was dragged through four or five trials over a 24-hour time period. There was no lawyer to give him a stay and say, well, Mr. Mr. Judge, can we have this at a later date because we need to take a recess for lunch? He was beaten, whipped, starved of water, starved of food. And he was then forced to carry the instrument of his death. The other day in Georgia, they executed a guy. And I think they executed somebody in Texas, which seemed like every other day. But could you imagine they executed him by lethal, lethal injection? Could you imagine the torture it would have been if they say you got to carry your own needle? Huh? Could you imagine the torture it would have been? They said that you have to push the plunger on your own needle and execute yourself. But Jesus carried the cross. He carried his own instrument of torture. He carried his own instrument of pain. He carried his own instrument of demise. He carried his own instrument which he would be lifted up on. He was then stretched out. He had these railroad spikes. I know everybody said nails. But how many think a nail can hold up a body? It wouldn't do it no matter what they did. You can bend it all you want any way you want, but it would not hold up a body. So in essence, these were railroad spikes that were driven through his wrist and driven through his 
he <coughs> he spoke <coughs> as he hung there on the cross. First thing he did was say, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Forgive them, they don't know what they do, but, but by what they do, millions will come into yes. your salvation. Yes. Many will be delivered because of what they do. Lord, forgive them, forgive them. They don't have a clue what they are doing. They don't realize what they're doing is to the glorification of God. They don't know. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Then he turned around and he gave, he gave a sign. He told John, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. He, he assigned on the cross while going through his pain. His, his mind wasn't on the pain that he was going through. His mind was on making sure that he had everything together before he had to take on his role once again. He spoke of the agony of all the sin resting on him. He said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? You don't, Father, I see you're not looking at me, Father. I, I know, I know that you will not look upon sin, Father, but, but all the sin has been thrown upon me, an innocent man, it's been thrown upon me. My God, I take care of bullshit. He spoke of the agony of the rest of the sin, rest of all. And then he gave up the ghost to redeem those who had died not in receipt of the promise, but yet they believed the promise. When he commended his my God, spirit to the Father, history tells us that a massive earthquake hit the city of Jerusalem. If you read in the book of Revelations, a massive earthquake will hit the world at the end time. But this massive earthquake, and some theologians say that the massive earthquake's epicenter was at the base of the cross. The massive, the, the massive earthquake began at the cross when he said, Father, into my thine hands I commend my spirit. Oh my God. A Roman soldier who was there hanging on for dear life said, truly, this is the Son of God. Truly, we have done a bad thing because uh, all that began to happen at that moment, the sky became dark in the middle of the day. The vengeance of God had been completed and thunder flashed and lightning roared. <laughs> And that earthquake began to rattle and shake and it formed a fissure. A fissure is a line that the earthquake forms. It's a fault line that's formed from an earthquake. And the fissure and the ground is said travel from the base of the cross down the path that the cross had been dragged by our Lord and Savior, had been dragged by Simon, Simeon. Oh my God. The fissure kept going through the gates of the temple past the courts of the Gentiles giving us Gentiles a passing by. The fissure roared past the place of hand washing, past the place of animal sacrifice, past the holy place, past the holiest place, right to the place the Ark of the Covenant sat. And when it reached that place, the Holy of Holies, the main concrete support cross beat. And the Holy of Holies in the temple of the living God, God, and Jerusalem is split in two. A massive concrete beam split in two. Signifying man's opportunity for reconciliation unto the Father. Beloved, the opportunity sets before you even right now to be reconciled to the Father. Jesus has already paid the cost. He's already reconciled you to the Father by paying the cost. But all you got to do is open your mouth and say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I care for you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I know that I cannot make it without you. Jesus, I, 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 I need you in my life. I have made so many mistakes, but I'm here to tell you, beloved, there's no sin that's so stained in your life that he will not forgive you. All you got to do is open your mouth and say, Lord, I need you. 
Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I was wrong. Lord, I, I, he said that his grace is sufficient enough to cover a multitude of sins.